I myself, you know, from the corner of my mind, another thing is, now uh, no more any lesson. <laughs> The Dalai Lama returned to the Norbalinka with his full retinue, but this time he was accompanied by armed guards. Little did he know that this 1,000-year-old ceremonial procession through Lhasa would be his last. The Chinese Governor-General of Tibet invited Dalai Lama to see a dance troupe at the Chinese military headquarters. In the name of dispensing with formality, the Chinese requested that he attend with unarmed bodyguards. Why that a refusal would worsen the fragile situation, the Dalai Lama accepted, but the news soon spread. The Tibetan people came pouring into the Nobulinka, and their spokesmen forced their way into our official meetings. So His Holiness didn't go. This meant that any communication between the Chinese and the Tibetans had completely broken down. As this had happened, everybody felt it wasn't safe for His Holiness to stay. You could never tell what the Chinese might do. So everyone wanted him to leave as soon as possible. Although that was what everyone was thinking and what everybody wanted, no one dared say it out loud. We were all terrified. The Dalai Lama received news that the Chinese were planning to attack the crowd surrounding the Norbalinka and bomb the building. Convinced that if he left, the people would be saved, he decided he had to leave. Of course, I think top most in my mind is fear, sadness, and almost like the feeling of desperate. And also leaving some of my close friends, sweepers or some monks or who look after temples or the uh, libraries in Nublinga, and including my dog. So as a human level, very sad, one factor. Then also, uh, several thousand Tibetan, you see, suppose uh, different Nublinga already get there. So that was the additional worry. If something happened, then thousands of people will die. Then also, uh, my own life, there is danger. One person's sort of future, but the future of Tibet also is related. So therefore, anxiety, fear, little doubt, hesitation, and sadness, all mixed, very much mixed. That night, the Dalai Lama escaped from the Norbalinka, disguised as a Tibetan soldier. I had an indescribable feeling. On the one hand, I was exultant that His Holiness was able to leave. On the other hand, I was very sad when I saw him. Unlike the usual protocol and fanfare, he left wearing an ordinary brown uniform, carrying a rifle like a soldier. The next day, reach uh, southern Tibet. Then fear of my life, then no longer. Then we have no hesitation to criticize <laughs> about our Chinese brothers and sisters. <laughs> While in Lhasa, uh, although sometimes we criticize, but uh, from w one corner of our mind, uh, we, oh, oh, be careful, be careful, be careful, or oh, that kind of sort of situation. Then it, as soon as we reach uh, southern Tibet, the free from Chinese forces, we get some, oh, some, some extraordinary feeling now, free, freedom. Two weeks later, after an arduous journey through the Himalayas, the Dalai Lama reached safety in northern India. That morning, around dawn, he began shelling the Nobulinka. 
At around 9 or 10, I went to Chokpuri Hill to the defensive position I had been assigned to monitor. When I looked towards the Potala, I saw there was a huge fire in the eastern wing, near the account section, a huge fire. The Keno bombardment started from the bottom of the hills upwards. That was followed by the rat -a -tat -tat of the machine gun fire. It was relentless. 